I want to talk, uh, I want to introduce somebody who's been a great advocate on behalf of people not just with type 1 diabetes, but also type 2 diabetes and gestational diabetes. Somebody who has worked hard in advocacy and who's going to talk about this from a uh, global perspective, the chair of the American Diabetes Association, John Griffin. Thank you, Congresswoman DeGette. How special it is uh, to be representing 26 million Americans, children and adults with diabetes, and another 80 million people in the zone of danger of diabetes unless we prevent it. And also, of the several hundred of you who are on the Hill this week advocating for full funding for the CDC and NIH to discover a cure for insulin to treat people with diabetes better. As someone with diabetes, I know how important the Affordable Care Act is in the lives of people with diabetes and their families. We know what used to happen. We used to have pre-existing condition exclusions. Our children were dropped like hot potatoes when they were diagnosed with diabetes, and we know import how important that is. We also know that our friends, that if we don't intervene and prevent diabetes, we see amputations, we see eye surgeries, and we see kidney dialysis of people around this country. And that's something we cannot afford, but yet it's needless and preventable by preventing diabetes. And the Affordable Care Act actually has mechanisms in place to prevent diabetes and the needless waste of taxpayers' dollars on surgeries, amputations, and kidney dialysis. We share the celebration, the one-year anniversary of the Affordable Care Act because it tears down walls, walls that left people with diabetes on the outside without the health care to prevent those amputations, surgeries, and kidney, kidney dialysis. And let's call a spade a spade. Pre-existing condition is an affliction that's bipartisan, and it afflicted millions of Americans in this country. It does not any longer. It was a, a, a dark black hole that has been now filled with light for all Americans and for all Americans with chronic diseases. We became involved in this fight because of people like Jesse McDoney. Since being diagnosed with diabetes in 2004, she worked hard to control diabetes. As someone with a family history of diabetes, she knew about complications and serious consequences of not managing it. But her husband lost his job. They ended up without any insurance because of a pre-existing condition. She looked for affordable insurance, but the rates were astronomical to cover someone with diabetes. She was repeatedly turned down. I tried to go to clinic, she said, but our income was $100 over the maximum allowed. So faced with those unbearable financial costs, she's been forced to cut back on her insulin. Now, you know that the two of you, the two young men here who are teenagers, were diagnosed when they were eight. They know what will happen to them when they cut back on their insulin. This bill makes it absolutely clear people will no longer have to cut back on their insulin just to survive. And let's be, fa let's be honest. We talk about complications. Complications is not a fair word for what blindness, dialysis, and amputations are their tragedies, and their tragedies this legislation helps prevent. The ADA also become, the American Diabetes Association also beca became involved with people like Delonte Lewis. When he was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, his doctor didn't hide the seriousness and said, if you don't exercise and take your insulin, you will die. Quite a message for a teenage child. It's serious business. Eight years later, those words echoed in his head as he struggled to pay for his medications. During the recession, he lost his job as an assistant store manager and therefore lost his health insurance. Without insurance, his health care costs tripled, causing unspeakable financial difficulty on his family. Before health reform, we had a system that would pay for amputations, but not the tools to prevent those expensive amputations. If you had diabetes like me, then you were just one job loss away from losing all of your insurance. Or if you have small children who have the misfortune of being diagnosed with a chronic disease, they too would be dropped. That's because that was the rules of the game then. They, we, were on the outside looking, outside looking in as opposed to now. So we celebrate the one-year anniversary of the, the Affordable Care Act because we know when this law is fully implemented, it's going to tear down those fences for people with diabetes, cancer, and heart disease. The fence is already down 
for Sue Jean Tartman's son, Ryan. Ryan was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes two years ago, and he was a teenager. Luckily, he had coverage from his father's job. But less than a year, he aged out, got too old to be on his parents' coverage. Yet, work is ahead of us because he was in a black hole. He could not do anything. But in August of last year, when this bill became law, his coverage was reinstituted, and his family is now protected in ways that they never were before. There is still much work ahead of us in this job. Defending these gains and implementing them is going to be challenging. Yet we know that the millions of Americans with diabetes are 100% committed to making sure these walls remain rubble, pre-existing conditions, a relic of an ugly past, and diabetes cases prevented. So at this one-year anniversary, the real news is that this legislation helps American families and taxpayers. No more pre-existing condition limitation, no more cherry-picking, no more limits on people's lifetime insurance. The needless billions of dollars that would be spent on surgeries, dialysis, and amputations can be avoided and prevented with this act if it's fully supported by the Congress. Thus, these gains are real and we will not allow them to be rolled back. And thank you for everyone in this room to have improved the lives of people with chronic diseases. Thank you.